sky over the Atlantic. The vast air ocean that must have stretched endlessly for Columbus when he sailed from Europe to America a few hundred years ago in over two long months. The same air ocean over the Atlantic probably did not seem as endless to Charles A. Lindbergh when he flew from New York to Paris some 30 years ago. But still, it took over 33 lonely hours. Today, that same Atlantic air ocean, leaving Columbus two months and Lindbergh's 33 hours in its wake, zooms by in a dramatic breakthrough. The year 1954 marked an historic event in the history of aviation. A new flight was inaugurated. It was called Flight 1000. There was nothing unusual about airport operations before Flight 1000's takeoff. It was duly announced and passengers checked in. Flight 1000's destination, London. Luggage was prepared for loading and all other routine pre-flight activities were taking place. 1000 seemed to be just another flight to London in all respects except that its passenger list was twice as large as on ordinary trips. Flight 1000 was airborne, but no plane was used. This was the first of so-called airline paper flights, a complete simulation of an actual flight that's been repeated more than 2,000 times since. The reason? To prepare for the revolution in transportation that is now here, the advent of commercial flying by Jet Clipper. In those early days, weather information for Flight 1000 and all the other paper jet flights was gathered as carefully as if real jets were to cross the Atlantic, gaining invaluable advance information about jet travel. For example, it is now known that at the altitudes at which jets cruise, generally 30 to 40,000 feet, flying will be above the weather. After years of paper flights like number 1000 and many hundreds of real flights with prototypes, the jet age is now here. The jet age begins before takeoff at the airline's new terminal now under construction at Idlewild Airport, New York. Jets are parked around it, as in this model. Passengers will board by walking along a covered ramp directly to the cabin level. Ground transportation delivers travelers directly to check-in counters. The circular design of the terminal, along with its unique cantilever roof, will assure speed of service and convenience for passengers. This is it, the first American commercial jet capable of economical transatlantic service, the Boeing 707 Jet Clipper. First to go aboard cargo and mail. Cargo shipments will be able to reach Europe in just six and a half hours. A letter posted in London or Paris after the close of business may arrive in New York the same night and be waiting for the addressee at his breakfast table or office the next morning. Speed is a byword for every part of jet operations. Since, with some arrangements of seats, more than 150 passengers can be accommodated, there is an entrance at the back and the front, while plane servicing facilities are on the far side. One indication of the staggering impact of jet travel, every one of the airline's dozens of jet planes can carry as many people in a year's time as the biggest ocean liner.
Last item aboard, the purser's briefcase, containing log, manifest, and other necessary documents. For the crew, ready to taxi to the runway now, fewer instruments than on propeller-driven craft, and engines that are so much easier to handle and maintain. The magnificent new jet, with a wing spread that's bigger than the entire distance of the Wright brothers' first flight. Take off, without any need for engine warm-up with outside noise now reduced to no more than that of propeller-driven planes. Capable of traveling at 575 miles per hour or more. Much higher and faster than you've ever flown before. The first passenger jet clipper to fly the Atlantic. Because of its greater size and speed, it will do the job of several of the biggest propeller-driven planes. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard the spacious cabin. Attractively decorated, air-conditioned, but draft-free. Newly designed individual overhead light units are an innovation. Roominess extends even to the powder rooms which look like those in a private home. And a new sensation, complete absence of vibration. Near sonic speed, but inside one of the most stunning discoveries. There is no feeling of movement at all, no vibration, hardly any sound. A new concept in air transportation, the travail has been taken out of travel. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We are now at cruising altitude, 35,000 feet. Our flying speed is 575 miles per hour. In addition, we're benefiting from a substantial tailwind by courtesy of the jet stream. Hence, our ground speed is now uh, approximately 658 miles per hour. Indications are that our arrival at London Airport may be ahead of schedule. I'll be speaking with you again from time to time. Thank you. This is the atmosphere on a jet clipper flight. Delicious food adds to the enjoyment. It's prepared in four simultaneously operating galleys where dishes can be cooked in five-minute ovens. Scenes of living room quiet and relaxation. The mood enhanced by lighting that can be changed from the pale pink of dawn through all the variations to the dark blue of night. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain again. I've just been talking with flight control at London Airport. The temperature there is 64 degrees and the weather is clear. If you haven't already changed your watches to conform to the time difference, I suggest you do so now. We are now making our descent. I won't be speaking to you again as we'll be in our landing pattern over London in the next few minutes. It was a pleasure to have you aboard our jet clipper. We hope to have you with us again soon. Thank you. to London in the same time that it takes you to go and see a baseball doubleheader. New York to London in six and a half magic hours. It all goes so fast now and it's so comfortable that you feel as if you hadn't traveled at all. Many hours gained and no sleep lost. London, the splendid ceremony called Trooping the Color, celebrating the Queen's birthday. Ah! 
and you arrive not only with more time on hand, but also not travel fatigued. You can take in the scenes and events more fully and at a more leisurely pace. Only one of the remarkable gains made possible by jet flying. to Paris, seven hours, only 30 minutes longer than to London. Paris, right away you're in the swim of things, because once more you've landed refreshed and with extra hours to do what you want to do in a leisurely way. Experiences like these which used to be rare events for the few or the few thousand, are becoming neighborly visits for the millions, because international air traffic, already increased fivefold during the last 12 years, now undergoes its greatest change. Jet speeds will help to accomplish one of man's long-sought goals, an easy interchange of peoples throughout the world. Transoceanic flights now become short hops. Six and a half magic hours to Europe. 